What's going on everybody? It's Zach and Pamela from Performance Plus here. And for a while I've been wanting to learn to perform butterfly pull-ups. And they're an incredibly technical movement that requires a lot of strength, control, coordination. So in order to learn them myself, I actually came to Pamela to try to uh, learn the proper technique for implementing butterfly pull-ups. And we thought we'd film it as we go through some of these progressions to help you all out as well, because it's a question we get quite frequently from athletes. So Pamela's gonna take us through kind of the prerequisites that you need to have before diving down the road of working on your butterfly pull-ups. So definitely strict pull-ups, um, many of them, chest to bar, just to make sure you guys have um, control in your shoulders. After you do that, the next trick thing I want you to do is behind the neck pull-ups. Zach's gonna place me up on this very tall bar. And I want you to, in orange position, be able to do a strict behind the neck pull-up without one pain and two being able to get your head in front of the bar. We do it in arch position because you will be in the arch position at the top of a butterfly pull-up. So we like to make sure that you can manipulate your body into that position as well. After that, um, I have them do strict butterfly pull-ups without any arch and hollow. So one more hoist. All right, so we're just moving our shoulders into this position of starting moving forward, backward, forward, backward. We're keeping our body as tight as possible. You might see a slight um, opening of the rib or a tightening of the rib as you move through it, but you want to keep as static as possible by squeezing your glutes. So those are two really good um, strict movements to make sure you understand um, that you have strength behind it. After that comes the coordination. And this is a really, really challenging coordination piece because it's the complete opposite of any kipping um, that we do. So in the kip, you're at the top in a hollow. In the butterfly, you're at an arch um, at the top. So what I have my athletes do is I have them work a PVC drill where they scoop into arch at the bottom and then pull their rib into hollow. Scoop, pull. You'll notice I'm kind of looking um, up at the ceiling at that angle, kind of a 45 degree angle. So when the bar pulls around, I don't hit my head and I'm getting ready to pull higher for chest to bar. So that's gonna try that drill. Right. So I'm arched here. Yep, you're arched here, good. And then you're gonna scoop behind and then you're gonna pull to hollow, and then back to arch, pull and up. And we're gonna go really slow, good. So what I like my athletes to do is make sure they go really slow so they feel every muscle in their body move at the right time, good. That's great, good. Now I'm gonna take you up to the box drill. So this is taking the PVC one more step. So you're gonna start just like you were at the top of your pull-up in an arch position, we're gonna fall slightly into arch and then pull the hollow, pull arch, pull the hollow. But what I want you to notice is the elbow position. So in a butterfly pull-up, your elbows are flared out just a little bit more than if you were in a kipping pull-up, you're here. So that creates the space for you to get into an arch position at the top. And we go really slow as well, too. So I'm going to show you how to kind of spot. Zach is going to go to the tall gymnastics bar. So we're going to start in an arch on your tippy toes. Good. Now you're going to fall forward. And then you're going to pull into hollow. So stop there. I'm going to fix this position. Pull back. Yep. And then go. Arch. Pull top pelvis. Good. Pull top pelvis. Once we get really good at that, we'll be able to add a little speed to it. You'll notice my tactile spot is right by, hold on, stop for a sec. My tactile spot is rib and lower back, because what I'm doing is I'm pressing him into that hollow position at the bottom, which is usually the most difficult coordination piece as you get down. So after we do that, we are ready to learn small circles. So come on down. And of course, after all the strict stuff that I showed you as well. So Zach, 
what he's going to do is start out in the smallest butterfly possible. I'm going to demo so you know exactly what I mean, and then I'm going to tactile cue you. So kick in front. Once you hit my hand, it's going to be here. That indicates that you need to shoot your feet back again. So you're going to kick, shoot, feet back. So watch again in slow motion. So kick, shoot, feet back. Kick, shoot, feet back. As I'm doing that, I'm bending my arms into the pull. The most important thing in butterfly pull is to never lose that active shoulder hang position. So when I come back down, I don't want to jar like that. That's where most of the danger comes in because there's a lot of force coming down. So don't overthink it. Just think about my tactile cue. Oh, not Hands are going to be slightly wider than a regular pull up but not too much. All right, go ahead. Yep, kick, pop, kick, pop, kick, pop, kick, pop, kick, pop. Excellent, down. That was fan freaking tactic. Good, now, you'll notice his head is a little bit more forward and upright. So I'm gonna give you um, a spot to look at. So I want you to stare at that light about 45 degree angle. What that does, if you look up, it pulls you into that arch position at the top, which is what we want for this skill. And scoop to my feet. Good, back, yep. Excellent. Good. Okay, come down. So much better. Good. Can you always push my feet? Uh, yeah, I can be there for like every workout. Absolutely. So when Zach said, can you always push my feet like that? This is a really important um, thing to bring up that any type of movement, whether it's barbell or gymnastics skills, muscle memory takes a lot of time. So once you're good at that, don't move on until you're amazing at it and you don't have to think about it. And then once you do that, we can add a little bit longer of a scoop. The longer you scoop, the higher you go. So let me show you what I mean by that. I also think about like long scoop, meaning I'm trying to grow my body really tall, kick up the soccer ball and then return for the next soccer ball. So long scoop. Means I get to go higher to the bar. So the longer I scoop my feet in front, it's equal and opposite reaction. The longer I scoop here, higher I get there. Make yeah. sense? All right, so we're going to start still small again. I'm going to move my tactile spot a little bit higher. You don't worry about anything, just hitting my hand and returning back. You're still giving me the feet back. Yep. feels really weird, right? Uh -huh. It is one of the strangest looking skills ever. Um, what I want to say about the butterfly pull up is um, it leads to no skill. So it is a single modality exercise solely for speed and crossfit. So um, like the kipping muscle up, I mean the kipping pull up will lead you to the same mechanics as a bar muscle up. This is just an absolute speed coordination piece. So if you are an extremely coordinated athlete and strong, these aren't that difficult. If you're not as coordinated, they just take a little more time. That looks fantastic, literally for day one of just doing the drills, I have never even done these with you. Um, so that's where I would like every athlete to start. First, strict pull-up strength, strict chest bar strength. Then we're going behind the neck um, pull strength. Then we're going strict um, movement strength where we are not arching hollowing for the butterfly. Then we're going to train with the PPC. Then we're going to go on the box. Then we'll go with the tactile fly. There you go. Any further progressions past that? So the further progressions past that is, um, like I said, get really good at where you're at. And then you can learn to kick higher and higher. Yeah. Yeah, like that, next, that second set felt like I naturally got higher up. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I would just keep practicing at like slightly reduced range of motion. Yes. Getting control there, it will naturally get to where I go a little higher, a little higher. Yep. Um, one other cue as you get better at these, or as you want to get higher, try and think about pulling the bar into you, and that will help um, get you higher as well too and build tension. Okay. As somebody's working on this, 
we decided to not build a performance plus program for developing butterfly pull-ups because the wide range of skills of people trying to get to that, it's kind of all over the place. It makes it more difficult than any other movement that we typically program for. And there are some people that would jump into that program when they don't have those prerequisites. And myself as a physical therapist that specializes in the CrossFit athlete's shoulder pain, and you as a high-level gymnastics expert, we don't want people that have these prerequisites doing butterfly pull-ups. It's just not worth the risk there. But if somebody's working through some of the progressions you talked about today, what Performance Plus program could they also be doing simultaneously a couple days a week to supplement their strength here? So definitely Bulletproof Shoulders. It's one of our top sellers. It's the best program to help with any instability in your shoulders as well, too. And um, I really like the chest to bar because it's a lot of strict pulling strength. Um, and so those two programs combined with making sure that um, you have pull up endurance, which is another program that we have as well, too. All of that will just make this a lot easier. So what you might want to do here, if you're working through these progressions, is maybe two days a week, work on these butterfly movements that Pamela took us through. Two days a week, hit some of the bulletproof shoulders workouts. And then another day or two a week, get to the chest of our program or the pull-up endurance program. That way you're, you're being well-rounded and taking care of your body as you develop the skill. And I would definitely add, I would spend a good four weeks, whether it's like two or three days a week, on just the strict strength portion of this and the PVC work. Um, that will help you get less frustrated as you move on. Yep. Really good. Okay, come down. Okay, what I liked, what you did for the first like three or four, is you'll notice your foot hit the same exact spot every single time. The okay. second your foot hit this spot in the scoop, you opened into the arch, okay. which is exactly what you want. I still would like to see a little bit of a tilt so, yeah, I was looking at yep. so here, that will help you feel more natural in the arch at the top. Okay. Scoop, pop, scoop, pop, scoop, pop. Uh-huh. Good. Okay. That was good. Now, I see, like, you're kind of over-exaggerating or trying to pop really, um, like, aggressively. Here's what I want you to think. Make your body as long as possible. So it's long, and then you're gonna flow back in, and it's like making music almost. Like it's, it's very like rhythmic, you know? You're doing an amazing job. You never sent me on a dance floor. <laughs> no! <That's not good. laughs> this, is, this is why this is difficult. I'm gonna tactile cue you just a smidge. Good. See how it's a little smoother? Excellent, yes. Much better. Did you feel the smoothness? Yeah. So I'm just keeping you longer and tighter. So you want to be inside maybe this area instead of over here. So okay. you want equal and opposite reaction for the kick versus the kick forward versus the kick back. That will keep a smoother hip. All right, I'm going to ask you a weird thing. Yeah. Elbows. Mm -hmm. it, I can definitely feel a big difference in just elbow force. Yes. Is there something I should do different grip-wise, or is that just needing to get used to controlling this more dynamic movement? It's definitely used to controlling more dynamic movement. You're in this position instead of this position. So you're definitely, um, you're definitely using different muscles than you are in a kipping or just regular even strict pull up. That's why those behind the neck are really, really good to build up a little bit more of um, tolerance with the elbow. Okay. But your elbow, I mean, your position to me looks good. Let's try this. Think about scooping like taking your fingertips at the top, when you're at the top, pulling the bar into your body. Don't bring your body to the bar, bring the bar to your body, using your fingertips. Yep. Let's try it again, that's all right. Okay. So I'm what, trying to kip right now. Yeah, so what you're doing is starting too big. Start in tinier circles. Okay. So, um, the, the smaller the circles, the more control we'll feel. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go back here and tap that to you. Okay, let's take a little break. All right, so we're gonna start off again, small, hitting a target here. Smooth rhythm, smooth rhythm, good. Kick back. Good. All right, so the first three were great. Um, that's when you stayed a little bit longer, and then you start to get tired, and instead of using your pull, 
you try to use your hip. So while it is an open arch hollow position, you've got to actually pull yourself up to the bar. Okay. I definitely feel like, we talked about last time, it's starting to feel like it's not just the joint and forearm muscles, but like my biceps feel more fatigued than they typically would with this regular tipping pull-ups. Yeah, butterfly pulls will definitely put a little more, um, uh, a little more, or use a little more strength from your bicep. So if you're starting to feel pain in your elbow because of that, work on just some banded bicep curls and just, you know, work on building the bicep a little bit more. Um, and, and so you don't feel a lot of pain as you're doing it. Okay. Let's try um, about three to four. I'm just gonna watch. I want you to think scoop really long and I want you to pull the bar into you as you come up. Long scoop, short, pull up, eyes up. That's okay, that's all right. So um, this is super common when you're learning butterfly pull-ups. I grew up a gymnast. It took me a good month to actually be able to consistently string 10 to 15 together. It's a very awkward movement. So don't get frustrated if you're like, oh, I can only do three today and then I did eight yesterday. Go back and just go back to a little more strict. So we're gonna start really tiny again. Um, as you fatigue, you kind of technique will go out the window and that's when frustration sets in, which we don't want. So go back to the step before and your step before is gonna be my tactile cue. Okay. It feels like when I lost the tactile cue, I didn't open up as much. Yes. Yep, your feet, once you hit the tactile cue, that's, you were able to set back really um, into that arch quicker. Yeah. Sit, come down. Great. Just, just meet you there. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, I'll just stand there for like every workout, just like here. Um, it's an excellent first day. I mean, way better than, you know, most go. So um, go back and drill. So what I would, say to people who are new the first month or two, drill three times as much as you actually do the skill. Then after you do a month of drilling with some of the skill, drop a few a few reps of the drill and then you'll add more time on the bar. And um, you'll get there. Next month I'm gonna see you flying through butterflies. All right Zach, so I know um, you know once you get fatigued, you get frustrated, same with everybody. So I'm bringing you back so we can feel some success and build some more muscle memory. So what I want you to do is when you're up at the top in the arch, I want you to pull the bar aggressively to you. So you really feel the tension. That's what you're missing when you fatigue. Then you'll pull the rib in. Go a little slower at the bottom. Rib and then back. Pull and then back. Good. There you go. So for any athlete, that's working any new skill. I always bring them back to a drill that they can feel a little bit more success. Pull that rib really in on the back. Pull that, pause, 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 pause. Rib, pelvis, yep. Slow, so you can feel it, rib, pelvis, good. There you go, good, now pause, stop. So once you feel it really well, stop there before fatigue sets in and you go back to a bad habit. That was really good, so it's, what that is doing is timing your body for that long scoop and then the pull into that um, position of arch where your hip is open, but you don't want to force your hip open. Does that make sense? 